Imagine an idyllic tropical island where the only inhabitants are thousands of seabirds. A place where humpback whales introduce their newborn calves to curious dolphins. We're catching your own dinner and exploring pristine coral reefs surrounded by creatures big and small is all in a day's sail. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30-foot, 50-year-old sailing boat, Maroul. Living off the land and sea while sailing a yacht that costs less than a new car, we show that it's possible to have big adventures with a seaworthy boat on a very modest budget. We're going to go and have a look at the Fairfax Islands, which is an old, um, old bombing range. But all the trees have grown back now, but there is still a, there's a, a, a lagoon in the centre of it. So, from space, you know, the photos we've seen of it look pretty interesting. So we're going to have a quick look. But then we've got to come back to the lagoon this afternoon because it's going to blow up to 30 knots. So, we'll come back around about four or something like that, find ourselves a nice anchorage. Hang in there. No fishing rod out this morning. Green zone. Green zone. Green zone. Bit of a trap for trap for people that are new to truising in this area. Even between reefs, even though the reefs might be green zones, sometimes the areas in between are also green zones. So if I had a fishing rod out here and the the fishing police came out, a couple Big of green. Fine. <laughs> It's not often we get to overtake anyone, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Most irregular. I think they're just having breakfast. Yeah, they're not even out in the cockpit. Who is? Neighbours. They probably think we're running our engine. Got a bone in our teeth, don't we? With the tide midway and dropping, we had to be quick if we wanted to explore the islands in a lagoon. As soon as we jumped in, we saw that this reef was alive and in great shape. These gold line rabbitfish and drummer were in abundance. They are grazing fish that act to keep the reef algae in control, which is vital for coral growth.
This looks like a deadly sea snake, but that's just a costume. This is a snake eel, and finding one hunting in the open was a real treat. Can you guess how these Picasso triggerfish got their name? This time of year was the start of the breeding season for rays and they were beginning to form large groups. Closer to deeper water, we found large schools of hussar, a type of snapper. They are incredibly curious and a favourite subject for photographers. It's schools of fish like these that are the reward for creating protected zones along the reef like that found here around Fairfax Island. These reefs are home to one of our favourite shark, the Wobbegong. Usually, they lie absolutely still, perfectly camouflaged against the seabed, ambushing anything that will fit in its mouth. We were lucky to find this one on the move. The female turtles out on the reef were a bit wary at this time of year. And here's the reason. It's mating season for turtles and the males were on the lookout. This guy has some impressive credentials. But not everyone was taken by his charms. These blue tang's tough skin protects them from scratches when they wedge themselves into the coral for shelter from predators. These ornate fish are called clown triggerfish and would likely be raising a nest of eggs together very soon. Most triggerfish are quite territorial and excellent and attentive parents. I had told Pascal that male turtles aren't all that choosy and they're not very bright. Some people think that the muted colours of the reef indicate poor health. Really, our hard corals are quite subtle in their colour and Fairfax was proving to be in very good shape. The variety of fish is as good an indicator of reef health as any other. Another good sign is that any patches not encrusted in corals are free of thick algae, for which species like this parrotfish are vitally important. Back at the boat, we saw something amazing.
With the weather starting to deteriorate, it was time to hoist sail and run back to our safe lagoon. We're just sailing up to the other end of Lady Musgrave Lagoon, the end where you can go fishing because we're out of we're out of meat, so we're gonna go and try and find some fish. Whenever the wind suits, we like to sail off our anchor. For tight quarters, we tend to just use the head sail as Marul sails quite well with no main up. Sailing out of the reef pass requires good control over the boat. Once clear of the protected area, we put out the trolling gear and it wasn't long before a Spanish mackerel picked a fight. Pascal and I just topped up our batteries and that's, it's just a routine thing and you're probably like, why is he telling us about it on camera? Um, 
The only notable difference on this one is that I just noticed yesterday and I said to Pasky that our batteries were reaching their peak charge quite early and they were holding it through the night even though we were putting a bit of load on there. And what I was saying to Pasky was that I thought maybe that the electrolyte was a bit concentrated because the levels were low. If you have lead acid batteries what will happen is over time, um, particularly if you're going through a lot of charging cycles and you're really loading them up on the bulk charge, which we do, um, sometimes some of that electrolyte can bubble off. You can lose hydrogen to air and part of water is hydrogen, isn't it? H2O. So we've actually lost a bit of the volume in our electrolyte and you just top that up with pure water. All right? You don't, don't just use any old scammy tap water that's full of chemicals because it'll, um, it'll, it'll blend in with your batteries. So we've just topped them off and so the, the battery voltage is starting to climb back up to 13.6. It, it, you know, as we topped it up with water and diluted the acid, the, the voltage actually dropped, but now it's starting to climb. So that's something just to look out for, isn't it? If you're out cruising around and you notice that your batteries are, are charging quickly and really like, you know, like sitting up at their peak voltage, even though you're putting some load in later on, just check your electrolyte levels. You, you want to do it every month anyway. Um, the Trojan batteries, the T105s that we're using, uh, lead acid batteries. I prefer lead acid batteries just because, well, the technology has been around for about 130 years and I sort of understand it. Um, the chemistry is fairly simple and they're really easy to maintain. You just keep an eye on them. Um, you maintain a good hard charge into lead acid batteries. Some people are a little bit reluctant and they, they sort of treat them with kid gloves. But Trojan have um, put out documentation that when you're bulk charging, when you're putting the, the main charge into it, your regulator should be charging them at about 14.7 volts. Um, and then when you're just trickling charging, just to just to top it off, it should be about 13.6. And some people might think 14.7, that's way too much. But if you really put a lot of charge into lead acid batteries, even to the point where they're bubbling, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The bubbling, um, you, yes, you can be gassing your battery and you'll lose electrolyte, but you can top it off with pure water. But it actually helps to mix the electrolyte. Um, and also, the worst thing that you're going to do is erode the plates a little bit if, you, if you're overcharging them. You know, don't buckle and, and do all that sort of stuff. Like, if you get it even up to 15 volts, it's not too bad. You'll be off-gassing and you'll be boiling off the electrolyte and you'll be losing some of it. But the big killer of batteries is sulfation. And that, what that is, is when they're left at a, a low state of charge for a long time, um, sulfates can build up on the plates and it's very hard to remove it doesn't it doesn't remove easily and it, it reduces your battery's capacity so you can either charge them at a pretty you know like treat them pretty hard like we do and they might die in like 10 to 12 years <laughs> right from erosion of the plates or you can just treat them gently and just like just just trickle charge into them um, leave them under charge and you kill them in a year our batteries have been used hard for three years and they are still holding a good voltage of like 12.8 volts um, you know once, once they've finished their cycle and you know we're making videos we're charging cameras charging drones all sorts of crazy stuff that normal cruisers wouldn't do you know we're putting a lot of a lot of load on our little bank um, and they those batteries are really going great just for the price of putting in a, a, a drop of water every month so good gear with conditions perfect to explore the outer reef of Lady Musgrave Island, I got the camera gear ready for our last free dive. When we jumped in, we were met by this enormous school of batfish. It was the biggest school of batfish we have ever seen. There were hundreds of them. This isn't an oil spill, it's an algal slick, and it is a common sight on the reef as winter draws to an end. Again, we were thrilled to find the reef in such good condition and so accessible from the towns of the Capricorn Coast.
coming back from our dive, we noticed a couple of large squid hanging out by our mooring buoy. You need the bucket, don't you? Yes. <laughs> That's a lot of squid. <laughs> you drank so well. <laughs> there was ink everywhere. You say, at least you didn't get any ink on you. That's the uh, secret. Oh, it's the end of Squidly Diddly. With the squid aboard for dinner, it was time to share the bounty with our neighbours. Here we go. <laughs> Ramora party. Here comes the fusies. Oh, there's a big cod down there. Is it? There's a big grover. Yeah. Oh. Is he hanging out? Yeah, yeah, he's just below the boat. There he is. What's up the remoras? Get back in your dive. Come on. I'm cold. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Free Range Sailing and if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to become a patron and support the continuation of our productions, we've put a link to our Patreon page in the description of this video. Or, if Patreon is not your thing and you'd like to help us out, we've also put a link to contribute to Free Range Sailing with PayPal.